Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and today this is exciting. We're going to talk about, okay, if you're thinking about doing an animated Christmas light show, because it's January, what do you need to know? And this is kind of made to a company. Uh, the video that I have, it's one of the oldest videos on this channel, it might be the first video I ever put out actually, that is a, um, a walkthrough, uh, it's a drawing video, and we'll link to it here, that walks through, okay, how does an animated Christmas light show work? And it, it talks through all the aspects, but there's some really common questions that I get from people um, that really are basics and things that you're probably going to want to consider before you do a Christmas light show, but they're not addressed in that video. So let's hit them here. Okay, so first things first, um, what are the parts that you need to make a basic animated Christmas light show to music? Okay, that's what most of these are. So let's take a look here at our table. We got a variety of things here. So we've got, first of all, pixels, okay? The pixels are the lights. These have a red, green, and blue LED in them, and they can mix pretty much any color between red, green, and blue. Okay, that's how color mixing works with light. Uh, you can make pretty much any color with these, and most of the pixels people use look like this. This is the node pixel uh, style pixel. Lots of people sell them. Um, they're really inexpensive. I come from the stage lighting world and, you know, on the commercial grade pixels in the stage lighting world, you can pay upwards of $5 or more per pixel. These, the 2021 price, uh, you know, if you bought them stateside uh, from most vendors was typically around a quarter per pixel, 25 cents, okay? They come in these strings. These strings have plugs on the end, okay? The plugs, um, in this case, are the X-Connect plug. Okay, the plug plugs into a controller. What's a controller? A controller can be a variety of things, okay? This is an example of a controller. I am shooting this uh, in the midst of our season here, so most of my controllers are out in the yard, okay? There's a couple things you really want to know about today's controllers. Okay, the modern controllers, this is a Falcon uh, F16 V4, and it was upside down until just now. <laughs> Not that it matters. Uh, these controllers and most controllers today have a built-in show player. So it used to be, and I used to advise pre, uh, even through 2021, that if you're playing your show, you often would play it back via computer using this program called X Schedule. That still works, but now the FPP program that allows you to um, build shows on a controller, or in this case, just inside the controller for the Falcon ones, um, it, it's come such a long way that I now advise that to people. Okay, so you got a controller, and it is a circuit board. So what we got to do is, most of the time, these aren't pre-built. You can buy them pre-built. So a controller gets placed onto a mounting board like this. This is one that I purchased. They're typically around $10, and they're well worth it because they're perfect size. They're pre-drilled. That thing goes into a waterproof uh, box, typically a, uh, a box used for cable TV installation or something like that. Okay, there's a lot of options out there. So these mount on here, and then wires come out the bottom of your box, they go to your lights. Okay, next to the controller, we're gonna need a power supply. Okay, so this is an example. Again, I mentioned my show's in progress. So I just have this little itty bitty controller with a tiny little power supply on it. Okay, most of the power supplies are larger, um, we'll throw some pictures in here as well of that kind of stuff. And they'll mount next to the power supply, wires go to it. That gives the power supply power. Uh, rather, the power supply gives the controller power. And most often, um, that power is then going to flow through to your lights through the controller. Now, there's a limitation with pixels. Pixel data, the data that runs to these pixels, despite what some people say online, is really only designed to go uh, a, a short distance, typically under 25 feet, or I often recommend 15 feet at the max. So does that mean you've got this controller sitting in your yard and you've got to get everything at least starting within 15 feet? No. Okay, so that's where uh, there's really kind of two ways that people set up their shows. Okay, you can have a lot of little controller boards around with different boxes all over your yard, you know, with lights plugging into them, right? Some lights here, some lights there. Scatter these all around your yard. However, there are also what we call 
receivers, okay? This is a receiver. So most of these Pixel controllers today now have long range plugs on them, okay? This is the Falcon F16 V4. It's got 16, sure, 16 plugs that are gonna be real close uh, to and gonna come out of the, the controller right here. But then there are also two long range receiver boards. And you'll see when you look at different controllers that there's a variety of options. Some are 100% long range. Some are 100% local. A lot of the controllers you see are a mix of longer range and local plugs, okay? And the long range plugs have ethernet output, RJ45, okay? You're gonna plug in an ethernet cable to that. It's not network data. It's not the same as networking controllers together with the ethernet ports on them to connect them to your main show player or what have you. Um, but um, it's just using ethernet type cable, okay, to connect these long range receivers to your controller, okay? And then today's long range re receivers, you will see, feature two ethernet ports. Okay, those two ethernet ports allow you to jump to multiple receivers. Now, a word on that. There are what people call receivers, differential receivers. There are smart receivers. And as the hobby has grown, these have gotten a little more complicated. So. You need to make sure if you're gonna use the smart receiver mode with your receiver boards that you chain multiple together. You gotta make sure it's matched to the controller you have, okay? Uh, this is a Falcon V4 controller. This is a Falcon 2.0 smart receiver. They're compatible. If I grab a Falcon 1.0 smart receiver, as of right now, I can only make that work in what we call dumb mode or uh, a single smart receiver off of this port. Not always bad, that can be perfectly fine, but you're not gonna be able to chain to multiple smart receivers. With the Colt controllers, they now have their own smart receiver. And so I believe they can use the version one smart receivers and chain up to three of them, of the Falcon ones, but now they have their own Falcon built, but it's a BBB smart receiver. And I believe it can do up to six chained off of a Colt controller. So there's a lot of options there. Now, when it comes to connecting your controllers together, and I know this is a ton of information, especially if you're new, but it's, it's the kind of stuff I'm getting questions on all the time. Um, you may chain your controllers together wired through their wired ports, okay? And, you know, the benefit to this is unless something physically happens to the cable, it's going to be very reliable to wire them together. However, uh, the Culp controllers and any of the FPP devices and things like that have the ability to come in, plug in a wireless antenna, or maybe you have a wireless controller, actually like this one from Wally's Lights that we built just a few months ago here on the show, okay? And these ones can connect wirelessly together. They can both store your sequence data on the device with the FSEQ file, okay? And then they just send little bits of information to sync each other between, and they can do that wirelessly. And I gotta tell you, as long as you're not in a terribly congested wireless area, this typically works well, okay, typically. Um, not 100% of the time, but you know, I'm running my display this year, we're midway through December, between testing and actually running my display, there is one time that I had a issue with it, okay, which is not bad. Um, I still recommend if you've got, you know, you're thinking about, okay, I could have a bunch of, excuse me, really tiny controllers, you know, all over the place with wireless. I could have a bigger controller with a bunch of receiver boards. I could have a few bigger controllers. You know, what is the best solution? My recommendation and what I've found to be the best solution here as we go into 2022 is don't do a ton of really tiny controllers, okay? If things are close together, put them on one controller. Use receiver boards, what have you. Okay, if things are far apart, put them on different controllers. The general gist here is we want to keep as few controllers, as few brains in the system as possible, okay? Because that just introduces more points of failure, things that are more likely to fail. Things like these receiver boards, you know, the, the controller itself has an SD card in it with your info on it, 
um, the chance of that SD card failing is higher than the chance of a smart receiver failing. Um, that just is. That's just through experimentation, through talking with others, through what I've seen. That's just the truth, okay? Because these aren't doing any smart processing, these receivers, okay? Your controllers are. So if you have a ton of little controllers, the chances of one of those going bad, having a card go bad, having a microcomputer go bad, is higher than a receiver going bad. So if you've got a lot of stuff close together, make it one or two controllers. If stuff is spread out, yeah, different controllers will work. You can do them wirelessly. Just make sure you have plenty of wireless range on your network and test always. Okay, so I think that about wraps it up for today. I know that's a lot of information here, but I hope it breaks down at least the basics for you when you're thinking about the pieces that all go together to make a Christmas light display. If you enjoyed this and you're thinking about doing your first Christmas light display, be sure to subscribe here to Learn Christmas Lighting. We want to be the very best resource to you to learn about Christmas lighting and get a show up this year. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Check out our free guide over at LearnChristmasLighting.com and check out our other resources such as our courses inside the Academy. Have a great day and Merry Christmas!